Hello everyone, my name is Teddy Prism and welcome back to Dust an Illusion Tale. Last time uh, we finally made uh, avalanches to occur to clear our way to our mountain and uh, we are just about to enter. Actually we look like we are going to be two screens away from uh, Moon uh, Moon Moonblood encampment. So let's uh, head out. Quite a bit of wind here. And it's uh, f further away than uh, I anticipated. These kinds of uh, winds are quite annoying. They can be used for interesting game mechanics, but uh, here it uh, just uh, feels a uh, really bad choice. Especially if I need to fight this at the same time. Not to mention this big guy too. Well, that the uh, flight helped. I have no idea how far away I'm, I am from next screen. Thanks to these winds. Well, there was a shop up there. I want to go there before heading uh, into next. And save point two. Hmm. Ah, hello again, my friend. I suspected you would return. So what do I sell? Spectral vest. Yeah, I'm going to sell that one. Then do I have anything else to else to sell? These two I think I'm okay with selling. And anything new that I have picked up. One wolf belt, then hollow sword and Tough metal, that was uh, what I was missing. Yeah, I'm going to sell one, but I have to rebuy it uh, straight away. So Your I can uh, is most make that uh, blade back, my friend. or augment uh, for Ara. It was this one, frozen blade. Yes, let's build that. There we go, and... Do we actually need anything else? Mm, doesn't look like it. Except this one. Did he have uh, any more full belts? And... Uh, Let's uh, quickly check it. Sir. 
only one of these. Well, maybe he will restock it uh, once we move further on. How many of uh, foods we have? Or what kind of foods we have? Hmm. Let's get some uh, lasagna. For later on. It should be enough for now. Your transaction. And let's continue our journey. What's over at this side? Nothing. There, there was a road here. I remember it. Before that day. What day? I have no idea what you're talking about, Dust. But I guess we're Look, going to find out. Ahead. A village. All the way up here? Do you think it's that moonblood camp Kane was talking about? No, it's something else. It's en enough talking. Let's get up there. Oh. Apparently, it's huh? not something. We tried. What? No. Impossible. Cassius. What did you call me? Who are you? What are you doing in this place? I like to know that myself too. You, you were dead. No, no, this is not possible. I don't know what demon you are, but you will not step any closer. Kill this thing. Well, time to fly. This fight just seem uh, sometimes too easy, way too easy. Why? Why destroy such a peaceful place? We didn't want any of this. Gus, what are you talking about? And who is Cassius? That's not... It's not my name. I'd remember it. I'd know it when I heard it. I think uh, that is uh, Cassius, uh, or what? You were Cassius in uh, some kind of previous life, I'm guessing. Seppli village. Looks like this place has been destroyed for quite some time. A year, actually. Huh? How do you know that? This was Ginger's village. I was here one year ago. According to Fuse, according to Ginger, I helped murder everyone in this village. Oh, dust. But I don't remember any of it. I remember this place, but it feels like it's been more than a year. Ara, what does it mean? It only means that things are not as they seem. Explore the village further, dust. Let us see what secrets it hides. I'm guessing uh, this is the place uh, where tutorial uh, took place. Or that uh, first uh, fight scene we had. This house... Do you remember something, Dust? This is impossible. So let's see what's inside then. Dust? How? You see now? But how, Ara? I don't understand. The answers lie above, Dust. Anything here? Nothing. Ooh. Ginger. She was sleeping right this, here. This uh, cutscene. On the night I came to say goodbye. But I hesitated. I didn't want to wake her. Didn't want her to worry about me. She couldn't know what I was about to do. Dust, what are you saying? She couldn't know that I was about to go avenge our parents. You mean, you're... But how? What's going on here? I... I remember now. But how? 
How can I have helped destroy this village, but be a victim of that same act? That's impossible. Only impossible for a creature with a single soul. Ginger. Those eyes. I know those eyes. So, Mithrarin, you finally see the truth. What did you call Who are you? I am Melda Grey Eyes, leader of the Moonblood people. Well, what's left of them, that is. What did you mean just then, that I can finally see the truth? What do you know about me? His eyes, Elder. They're Jin's eyes. They do look remarkably similar to your brother's, yes. That is because his soul lives on within dust. What? However, hmm? to suit our needs, we required two souls. The soul of innocence is a noble thing, but without skill, without power, dust would have been struck down just as easily as your brother was on that fated day. No. So we combined your brother's soul with that of his murderer, the royal assassin known as Cassius. They perished at the same time, forever entwined. Never before had I heard of such an event. Hmm. You murderer! My parents did nothing wrong! You have been deceived, little one. Your parents turned against their king, an act of pure treason. What resistance there was, was led by your family alone. You destroyed my village, murdered my friends and family. You will not survive this day. I take no joy in slaughtering one as young as you, child. But you have forced my hand. A grave injustice was done that day. Cassius murdered a defenseless djinn, but his pride and arrogance proved to be his undoing. But how? How can this... this thing be my brother? It's not possible. I couldn't even remember you when we met. You are djinn, yes. But you are also Cassius. Two souls, forever at odds. One of innocence, one of power. Together you form the one we call... Mithrarin, he who is born of the dust. I never knew what happened. Jin just disappeared one night. I had always hoped he would turn up alive someday. That he would come back. But could you really be him? Ginger, Part of him, I, I don't think. Know. I, but not I don't all holy. Now, Dust, I imagine you have many questions. Please, do not hesitate to ask them. What am I exactly? Who, uh, Let's go with the... What am in I? order. You are what my people call Sen Mithrarin. He who is born of the dust. Created from the essence of the life thread itself. You see, my people have been on the verge of extinction for a great many years. General Gaius planned to eradicate us once and for all. And while our warriors are proud and strong, what chance would we have against such a powerful foe? To defeat General Gaius and save our people, we would need a warrior capable of standing against an entire army. This warrior would also need to be pure of heart, incorruptible. So that's why you picked Cassius and Jin, Just like you said, opposites. Exactly. Cassius was one of the greatest warriors this world has ever seen. And Jin's purity of heart would help guide our warrior to save our kind. From their fallen souls, you were born. Born to save us. To save this world. So why couldn't uh, I remember anything? Why did I only remember now? I didn't even recognize Ginger when I met her. You may possess the souls of two separate beings, but your body and mind are your own. You were created to save this world, so we felt giving you memories of either soul would simply distract you from the task at hand. 
I had no idea who I was, what my purpose was. <sighs> you say that, but in all cases, you did exactly what we intended you to do. You saved complete strangers outside of Aurora Village. You stopped our wayward brother Fuse from destroying all that we sought to save. You saved Mudpot and brought the waters of life back into this land. You purged a demonic rage from this land and even helped two old souls find peace once more. You may not have known your purpose, but that did not stop you from fulfilling it. And now I'm here. Yes, now you are here. And we can finish this fight once and for all. Who was uh, Fuse? I like to know that too. Fuse? He said he was a Moonblood, but he looks nothing like you. Fuse. He was once a fine warrior, and a close friend of Ginger's family. He would help transport goods between this village and our camp. After the village was destroyed, I guess he lost his mind. He was horribly disfigured after the attack. The only way he could survive was in a special suit of magical armor that I helped to construct. He demanded we attack General Gaius right away, but I would not hear any of it. He would have killed us all in the name of vengeance. We would not have stood a chance. When I refused to send our warriors into battle, he called me a coward and vowed that he would destroy Gaius with or without my help. I fear the very armor we made to save his life had corrupted his mind and body beyond repair. Poor guy. If only we could have gotten through to him somehow. No, you're right to kill him. If he had remained alive, there's no telling what damage he could have done. Ginger is right. Fuse was beyond saving. For all our sakes, I hope the same is not true of the world he sought to protect. So, how does Ara fit into all of this? How does the Blade of Ara fit into all this? What is it, exactly? It is one of the five blades of Elysium, ancient weapons forged when our kind were many, and the way of the flameless light was commonplace. Flameless wait, wait, light? Wait. What the heck is the way of the flameless light? A path we Moonbloods continue to follow. It is a way of living, a way of thought, that allows us to make use of a power both old and great. Magic without magic. I am so confused. You're not alone, Peter. Nimbat Sword Guardian, you've studied the ancient doctrines. You must know, in the event that the sword is summoned by its rightful owner, you are obligated to follow. I may have skipped over the <laughs> You haven't answered my question. No the surprise there, Peter. created to guide their sword bearer's dust. I was summoned to your side to ensure our balance was maintained between the souls within you. Ah, my old friend, it is good to hear your voice once more. It has been a long time, Master. Wait just a second. How can you possibly know each other? My clan's been keeping the sword hidden for over 200 years. Master Grey Eyes has lived for a very long time, Fidget. Longer than any of you. So you were sent to keep an eye on me? To help you reach your true potential. Nothing more. Being a uh, cryptic, I think you are once more. I have no more questions. What now? You must join us in the Moonblood camp to the north in the Everdawn Basin. That isn't anywhere near the Everdawn volcanoes, is it? They are one and the same, yes. Well, that's fantastic. Volcanoes? Indeed. What a better place to hide than in the most volatile land in all the kingdom. Oh, and I at the same time, a dangerous meadow, or a quiet forest, or some place that doesn't explode every ten minutes. <laughs> Just, your friend seems awfully tense. No, I'm fine. Come on, let's go to the blowy up mountains. Really, I'm serious. Fidget, <laughs> you need to have more faith in me. I'll have faith in you when you have faith in yourself. How about it, huh? Who are you? Who are you? Mm. I I'm tempted to answer one of these, but uh, I'm going to go. I am dust instead, 
because even though dust is uh, both part of a uh, gin and Cassius, his uh, actions uh, so far has have been uh, his own instead of uh, either of uh, them. I am. I. Uh... You see, you still haven't figured it out yet. Lizard guy tells you right to your face, and you still don't know. Fidget, please calm down. You mustn't test your friend like this. I just... <sighs> if I'm gonna follow you to the literal end of this world, I need to know who I'm following. And why. I understand, Fidget. You're right. I can't ask you to follow me. But I can. Fidget, you have stood by Dust's side for this entire journey. You have watched him save this world. How can you continue to doubt? I just don't get it. It doesn't matter who he thinks he is. He's dust. That's who he is. That's who I know. And that's what I try to please, answer. I can't do this without you. Can you, uh... Can you repeat that? I said I can't do this without you. I'm sorry. I just... Nobody's ever said that to me before. And it won't be the last time, I assure you. Are you ready, Mithrarin? I am. Then we will meet you in the Everdawn Basin. Goodbye, Dust. We'll see you there. Hmm. That was uh, quite something. What can I say about this? Plenty of uh, story. And I think uh, that's a good place to end this episode. To let that uh, story sink in properly. Thanks everyone for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.